art lovers and magical folk, it's very Sarah here. Today is the eve of Beltane and I thought it would be lovely to share with you uh, what's going on in my neck of the Enchanted Forest, how I am balancing both Halloween and Beltane in this southern hemisphere and my witchcrafting practice. And I thought I'd also take you on a tour of my ancestor altar. So it's quite a uh, squash together of curious things. And <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say really. We we'll just jump right in, shall we? Okay, so back in May, we had Samhain here in the Southern Hemisphere, and I had a dream. In the dream, Kurt Cobain was there, and he said that my ancestor altar conjured him into being, and that by showing up in a state of reverence in this space, I could call him into being. There was lots of tears and red wine and these very curious um, dresses that have shown up in a dream about past lives before when I was a teenager. And anyway, before I could speak more to Kurt about the magic of conjuring him into space, he had to disappear up an escalator and this big hummer came with these like Maori warriors in the front seat, which then turned into a train and a wooden ship and these big Egyptian gods came out and he, Kurt Cobain, just got into the moving vehicle of changing shapes and disappeared and I fell to the ground and my red wine glass broke everywhere and it was like I'd offered up this red wine to the ground like blood all over this grass. It was really traumatic and I couldn't stop crying and I remember waking up with this huge feeling of like awe and gratitude that he had visited me in my dream. I really felt like for whatever strange reason it had occurred and it was a clear link that he said about showing up at this ancestor altar. And so I pondered on sharing the space with you guys. I have shared it before um, as part of a collaborative group that I used to make films for and I haven't shared it since and I was gonna do it for Salwyn because it felt like the appropriate time but it didn't happen and I kept it quiet and now it's Beltane and I felt the uh, the pull of the uh, Samhain Beltane celebrations across the plane of this earth and I thought oh it's very interesting and all these Nirvana songs popped up on my Spotify the other day and I thought wow this is actually the time to share it so here I am I'm gonna share that with you uh, let me turn the camera around so welcome to the top half of the ancestor altar you can see that Kurt Cobain's journals has been added to the space this happened post magical dreaming I also have managed to dig out my family tree book, which goes back a few generations of family. There's my beloved cat who passed a few years ago. A candle dedicated to a fae spirit from my inner plains called Mother Holly, who links me to ancestral magic. Bat bones as I excavate the shadow. Moon rabbit bones and a skull. A spirit animal that also links to ancestor magic. A beautiful key to Hecate, queen of the crossroads and the witches and the dead and the mighty dead. I feel she has to do with this. There's also a green stone which links us back to New Zealand, which is where my husband's family, part of them are from. I've got some people who are inspiring me to do my work in the world. Bali Myers, Jim Henson, David Bowie, and our beloved Freddie Mercury. They came this year in my work of sovereign expression. And so there they are. It's very curious that I now actually work in the building in the city where Bali Myers uh, had her art studio in the Nicholas building. So I feel like she, uh, the minute I put her up here in this ancestor altar, 
um, yeah, the coincidences are wondrous. I recently added a St. Francis and two keys that I'd found on this gold thread and the hammering of them into the ancestor altar felt so delicious. It was really very strange and wondrous and it makes me realize that this space is begging for more modifications. I just get a bit stuck because I'm not really sure what I want to do. I know I want to paint these panels, these open and close, but I feel like on the inside I would really like to pop something, just not sure what. There's a water offering that I change weekly, a gift to drench the spirits, and a time turner. memento mori may we remember that we too will die and it's very interesting because the maternal line of my italian side of the family's name is mori and so i feel like it links to this work of the dead that i need to do there are different symbols and talismans i work with with honoring the dead and again more symbols and uh, mementos of past loved ones. There's the ashes of my dog. There's the jam made from the berries of a tree that was cut down that caused great tragedy. There's all my hermit crab shells. <laughs> An uncle's talisman from Hong Kong. A grandfather symbol and another uncle symbol. My beloved maxi cat. Some graveyard dirt from the graves. Uh, from from the cemetery site rather than graves as such but from the cemetery where a lot of our ancestors are buried in Western Australia and a blackbird skull and talons here blackbird is a bird that is here in Victoria that is just gorgeous it has the most beautiful song and it really feels like a bird that is between the veils because it sings at dusk and at dawn and yeah there's something about blackbird and my grandmother as symbolized with this mary statue here her name was mary and she was a beloved of mary the goddess and uh yeah there's something woven we weaving woven <laughs> woven about there and so the magic of the ancestors is a uh, huge for me and I guess the first thing I want to point out is that this is ancestors of the mighty dead which is spirits that inspire my witchcrafting my arts they're like the white thread ancestors they're the inspiration points they're folk beyond the veil that I choose to call in as kin because their work supports my work in the world through the way they've inspired me. And also I think that there are white-threaded, mighty dead creatures of, say, perhaps the witchcrafting that you practice that you can call on in great allyship for the work that you're doing. And so this is a space where they are honoured. And then there's also the honouring of the beloved dead or family members and there's certainly some family members that I care less to <laughs> conjure into the space but what I've found through having this ancestor space is that my relationship to the ancestors of my blood my red threads that have passed is softened I'm not um, I'm not so Frightened's not the word, but I certainly didn't want to work with them before. There were certainly um, feelings of me wanting to discard, remove myself, not be associated with these red threads. And this ancestor altar reminds me that this red threads have created me as spirit in this body. They are essential. And within these red threads, there will be spirits that are kindred to this path that I'm on whether they were conscious of it or not because I am here there is a divine spark within that red thread just for the few 
pure purposing. That's not the right words. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is that I am here and therefore that is proof that there is something in the red threads that desired me in this space, that there would be allyship in the work that I want to do in the world, that I do in the world. It's helping me come to terms with what ancestors mean for me. It's curious and it's deeply personal work. I want to create big black drapes from the roof and hang them down either side and I'd love shelves covered in photos and oh, it's a growing space but we might move house soon so I won't get too attached to jumping all in on this just yet. Here we have the Beltane altar. I'm celebrating Beltane tomorrow in November because this is the date that is the exact midpoint between the spring equinox and the summer solstice. And you can find out these dates for the Southern Hemisphere via a website called sphearesoflight.com. I'll link that in the comments below. I find it really helpful and what it's offered me this season is the space to celebrate Halloween last week. I carved my very first jack-o'-lantern at work. I got to set up creepy, spooky, dark, magical things. And I also got to make some gorgeous little jack-o'-lanterns in clay, celebrate the love of grumpy turnips and the synchronicity and wonder they bring into my life. And so I could have all my creep and spookiness and then this week I could settle into Beltane opening. Very, very nice to have both and rather than either or. I saw some people getting a bit cranky online that witches celebrate Halloween and Beltane. And I just kind of think, who cares? <laughs> you do you. And so it was really nice this year to um, find a way to make it work for me. In the past, in a circle that I used to circle with, called Skodif, the sacred circle of the inner flame, one of the magical witches, who you'll find here in YouTube land, the beautiful heiress, uh, she and uh, I think maybe it was her uh, created or coined the term Helltane. Um, which is a mix of Halloween and Beltane. And so we would jam it together in beautiful chaos magic style. And it works. I don't know how, it just does because witches are magical and create the life they want, hey? And since now that I'm working majority in my own solo practice, I find that having Halloween as a way to just celebrate creepiness and fabulous holiday Hollywood Halloween movies and uh, just all that spooky stuff, which is fun. And then I can also then have Beltane at another time. It's nice. I like it. I like both end. I think that's all for now. I'll put in the link below the previous Ancestor Altar video that goes into a little bit more detail about each of the different items on the altar. It's from 2018, so things have changed since then, but you'll get a general overview. I think I also knock a few things over and swear, and it's all very glamorous and delightful. Um, I'll link you to the Spheres of Light, and I'll link you, of course, to Eris, because I love her. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Enjoy your wherever you are and whatever you're doing. Thank you for being here. <laughs>